Let us talk about the cervical spine for location methods and tune measurements. The spinous processes of the vertebrae are in most cases good markers for anatomical orientation. The correct positioning of the patient is important in order to facilitate palpation of the spinous processes and the intervertebral spaces. For palpation, the practitioner places his index and middle finger to the left and right of a previously identified vertebra, gliding smoothly with both fingers from one intervertebral space to the next. Palpating the depressions between the vertebrae allows for orientation along the spine, even in heavy or obese patients whose spinous processes might not be palpable. Note regarding the inner branch of the bladder channel. In clinical practice, the points on the inner branch of the bladder channel are not on all sections of the spine, measured at a 1.5 soon distance from the midline. Rather, they are located on the highest point of the paraspinal musculature so that the distance to the midline tends to be greater at the level of the lower thoracic and the upper lumbar spine. Note regarding position of the patient. The position of the patient can significantly influence the level of the vertebrae in relation to other anatomical structures, such as the scapula or the pelvis. Now let's talk about the cervical spine. For orientation on the cervical spine, the patient should best be seated or standing. The head should be in a neutral position. Spinous process of the second cervical vertebra. The first cervical vertebra, the atlas, has no spinous process, so that when palpating down the posterior midline from the occiput, the second cervical vertebra, the axis, has the first palpable spinous process. Do15 is located slightly superior to this. The spinous processes of C3, C4, and C5 are often only indistinct or not at all palpable, while C6 can, on the other hand, be clearly felt for identification of C6 and C7. So here you could we could see the location of uh, DO15 or how we could would be able to palpate uh, the first spinous process, which is the axis or uh, second cervical vertebra, the first palpable spinous process. Vertebra prominence, spinous process of C7. Two fingers, for example, the index and middle finger, are placed on the spinous processes assumed to belong to C6 and C7. The patient is then asked to flex and extend his head. With a fully functional spine, the spinous process of C6 will start to slide anteriorly with the slightest extension, while the process of C7 will remain fixed. With further extension, the process of C6 will disappear completely while the one of C7 remains palpable. If the practitioner can feel movement under his upper finger, the fingers are placed on the spinous process of C6 and C7. If, however, the process under the upper finger remains palpable even with stronger extension, the fingers are most likely resting on T1 and C7. Correct identification of C6 is important, since C7 is not always the vertebra prominence. In many cases, the spinous process of T1 is equally or even more prominent than that of C7. DO14 is located below the spinous process of C7.